Okay, so I want to sum this up before going further. We're going to go back over the ground again um, to flesh out some of the details, but the sum up is basically like this. I'm going to put it in terms of my own life so that you can apply it to your own as you wish. I just don't know your personal details. I am in training to become a king post-death. That's God's will for my life. That's God's will for every believer's life. It has Zippo to do with doing anything for the world down here. Because the world and all of its works are going to be burnt up. Second Peter 3. This is just a pregnancy period. Romans 8. God has no use for the stuff down here in the world as far as what he wants done for him. And specifically, father for his son. We are in training to become a body for Christ as booty, as bride, as church, forever. That's it. Everything down here is a way station. A temporary training ground for the real life after death. That's God's view on the whole thing. So anything that happens to me down here is for that purpose alone. Anything else that I happen to be doing in this body is part of. There's a whole training program. God foreknows everything that's going to be in front of my face. Everything that's going to be around me. The whole history, the whole situation, everything. And he works everything together for good, Romans 8.28. And the good is this good of building the body of Christ. That's it. So, on the one hand, doing any good down here for the world is totally irrelevant. On the other hand, because this world is here, it's a cost of doing business to take care of it But at the same time, if the world does not want God to do it, then God won't. So the world can have a choice. And obviously every human being in the world has a choice. Do you want to do the doing? Do you want somebody else to do the doing? And who is that somebody else? Now, there are basically three kinds of parties who can do the doing. And they all have their advantages, disadvantages, and limitations. First party, humans. And we're all big on getting other humans to do things. And we have to do things just to keep body and soul together. So that's a natural answer. Okay, but there are two unseen groups also. The demon boys, which is headed by Satan, and they're really busy trying to do as many good deeds as possible to deflect your attention from the third party, who is God. And of course, he's, God has his own angels employed to do a lot of things. God communicates directly to humans who listen to him and gets a lot accomplished that way as part of their training program. And then there's another thing God does. If those humans need something, God will bless the periphery of those humans for the sake of those humans because humans are in bodies and bodies have needs. But God's idea of blessing is rather large. Leviticus 28 tells you that you get good weather, good crops, protection from your enemies, competence, 
for your whole region and by application the whole world because you know what we're all interdependent but even back in Israel's day you know because you had less interdependence then because people were more segmented because it was more of an agricultural economy less technology okay but see there's still wind and rain and tides and all those things are affected by even the planets so for Israel to get good weather, as God promised them, well, the whole region's going to be affected. And then he's going to have to do something about the moon and the sun and gravity and the tides and the winds because all weather is interrelated around the globe. So if Israel's going to get good weather, that means that the rest of the world has to get good weather too. Just because of the way God designed weather to work and that is all the picture of the blessing by association as my pastor likes to call it with the believer Israel was appointed as a believer nation that was their covenant whether they were good or bad they were the representative of God down here that's why he centrally located them at the nexus of three continents Israel itself is very tiny but everything went through her and therefore people could learn about Israel's God that way whether they liked Israel or not whether Israel was faithful or not it was still the repository of true information about God now the covenant has changed church is this scattered entity no longer a political entity but just individual believers wherever they happen to be living. And wherever you're living, God will bless your area. Okay, well, there are Christians all over the world. Not too many. And when I say Christians, I mean positive Christians. People who have believed in Jesus Christ and are under a teacher, they're using 1 John 1 9, and they're learning and living on Bible. There aren't very many. I'd be surprised if it was 50,000 out of the total. Most Christians are fooled by Satan's plan. Okay, but even 50,000 Christians were pretty dispersed. Every single country has at least a few of those believers in it. And since our countries, especially today, are so interdependent, in order for believer A in country A to be blessed under Leviticus 26, then pretty much every other country in the world's got to be blessed also. Because we all depend on each other now. Our, our borders, we still have border wars all over the world, but they're very limited. Our borders and our way of having an, an economy now, everybody's dependent on everybody else. So, I need here in Houston I need somebody way off in Japan or in Saudi Arabia even to be having a good set of circumstances in order for me to have my good set of circumstances you see the point the Christian is a source of blessing even as Israel was a source of blessing because the covenant changed Okay, and it goes back to Israel's covenant under different terms because there's no longer a national entity of Israel until the second advent. But at the same time, the people still continue to get blessing whether they believe in Christ or not. God forbid, and I feel sorry for, anybody who tries to attack the Jews. The covenant to the Jews as a people is still active. It will remain active forever. That was a promise to Abraham about his kids it didn't depend on whether or not his kids believed in Christ the way Abraham did you know in those days Christ was known by a different name see the Jews as a people are still protected anybody who wants to get in trouble with God and get cursed and get, in, get you know beaten up attack the Jews any Jew I don't care how apostate he might be if you want misery, that's the way to get it. 
And that's why we can see all those crazy Muslims. You have to be crazy to be a Muslim. Crazy or spectacularly uninformed. All right? So God's idea is fundamentally unrelated to this world, but logistics are such that you're in the world, even though you're not of the world as a Christian, you're in it, and he's going to use everything in this world to train you. And that means he has, well, doesn't have to, but chooses to, bless the world to facilitate your own training. Now, I want to focus on something about that. You are definitely and absolutely and truly, for as long as you're in this body, a ruler down here right now. You're technically in training to become one. But the impact of this design of training for you necessitates blessing or cursing to your periphery while you breathe down here. I thought I'd give you a lot of pause. First of all, instead of doing the peasanty thing and trying to do good deeds, you ask God for whatever it is you want, and you'll get it. That does the world more good anyhow. And that leaves you free to spend your time the way God wants you to spend it, learning and living on Bible. By the same token, if you are not doing that, you are a source of cursing to the world. It is not, repeat, not a coincidence that Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Katrina hit Bible Belt areas. Those people aren't learning and living on Bible. That's why they got hit. Now there's always a few who are doing it, and the many who are not. But, chances are real good that whatever's going wrong is because the many are not. So if you want to do a good deed for humanity, use 1 John 1 9, find out your right pastor, learn and live on Bible. And again, as I've said before, it doesn't matter that your pastor's correct on all doctrines. It matters that he's correct for you. God will fix him and you, you know, progressively. So in that sense, it doesn't matter what denomination you are. Whatever's wrong with it, he's fixing it gradually. And if the pastor won't take the correction, he'll move you away from that pastor to some other male, male, male pastor. But if you're not even in the system, then you are a source of cursing to your family, your friends, your business, your employer, and everybody else you're around. And it doesn't matter how correct you are on those doctrines. You understand? It's the system first. The system. That's God's deeds. God has a system for his own deeds. You are being trained for something that is after death. Meanwhile, the only blessing the world can get is through those believers who are in the system. If you're not in the system, cursing accrues due to you. It's your fault. See the classic ruler idea here? We always blame the rulers for everything that goes wrong. And we credit them for everything that goes right. You know, the fact that a ruler never rules alone is kind of beside the point. We always look at one head person. We have a big thing about that. Even if it's a president, we treat that person like a king or a queen. And if something goes wrong in the Obama administration, we blame Obama. If something goes right in the Obama you know, administration, we credit Obama. Even if he's not really the source of why it's working or not working. Same thing true in any other country of the world. Okay, well, honey, that's true for you too. It's true for me too. When something goes wrong in my periphery, it's my fault. 
I'm not doing something right in the spiritual life. I'm not growing fast enough or I'm being, you know, snitty with God on something. And I always have to ask myself, what, what is that? Okay? That's true for every other believer too. Even though you're not yet a ruler, you might barely know how to spell Jesus. Okay, fine, that's normal. That you know, we got a growth path. Okay, but if you're not in the system, you're a cursing to everybody in your periphery. That's why I keep saying to people, desubscribe from me if you if you hold to this or that or the other thing. There are certain key doctrines you cannot afford to get wrong. You cannot afford to stop using one job one night. If you're not using it, you're not in the system. You cannot afford to stay away from one male pastor teacher at a time that God has willed for you. You better be asking about that. And he'll give you a fast answer. There's no dilly-dally with him on that. Because that's part of the system. In that system, you're learning and living under by on Bible under that teacher. Whatever his teaching schedule is, that's what you need to learn that day. You're not doing that, you're not in the system. You need to be talking to God all the time. A bad relationship is when people stop talking to each other. A good relationship is when they keep talking to each other. So if you weren't talking to God, something bothers you, and you don't have a good relationship with God. You're out of the system. And five, which is optional, depends on what God wants. You talk and debate with other Christians to sort of hone your skills and learn better what you learned in Bible class. But you talk to him first whether you talk to anybody else or not. Okay? Because that's part of learning and living on Bible. That's the system. So you can be Catholic, you can be JW, you can be SDA, and hear all these arguments against your particular brand of Christianity. Okay, fine. But you're in the system if you're doing those four or five. Depends on, you know, your circumstance. Doing those things. You're in the system. And you don't worry about what you might have wrong. God will show it to you. As time passes, show it to your teacher, show it to you. You're in the system. And if you're not in the system, whatever's going wrong in your periphery, it's your fault. It is not the unbeliever's fault. It is not the apostate guy next door's fault. I mean, it is, but for your purposes, it's not. It's your fault. When something goes wrong in my life, my first question Dad, where am I screwing up? Sometimes things go wrong in your life for training purposes, and it's not your fault. But God will make that clear pretty quickly. And if it is your fault, he'll make that clear. And it's always a combination of the two. There's always something you're getting right in the relationship, and there's always something you're getting wrong. So what do you care? You just want to know the answer and, you know, keep trucking on. Coco. Ephesians, um, Philippians 3.14. Coco. Keep on keeping on. So that's the ultimate statement and summary of your role here. And my role. I'm in training to become a king post-death. I really, I, I, got, I want to make sure I make this clear too. I have a, a royal problem with that. I do not want to be a king. I do not like having authority over other people. I just don't. I would rather be a slave. Okay, but that's the point. If you're the king, you are the chief slave. Christ proved that. This is what kingship is. Our king chooses to act like a slave. God himself throws himself down because he wants to insert himself. And that is a sexual metaphor. He wants to insert himself into everything. That's, that's the real thrill for him. Isaiah 54 records it. So does Ephesians 1, uh, 15 through 23, especially verse 23. But you can see it all over the Bible once you know what you're looking for. It's thrilling to God to do that. Who am I to argue? It is not thrilling for me to do that. Well, I'm wrong. I don't like the hassle. Well, I'm wrong. 
Do I want to be close to Christ? Then I better learn to like the hassle. Or at least go through it. Because I won't be close to Christ if I don't. Now maybe your spiritual problem is different from mine. This is a real spiritual problem for me. If I, if I die the sin unto death, this will be why. This is what also tripped up Satan. Okay, so I'm emulating Satan when I get ticked off about this thing. That's where I'm wrong. Okay, you might be wrong in a different area. Wherever it is, find it. Come to grips with it. Admit it. And, you know, it'll keep on being a sticking point. And move on. Because the world needs you to get with God's system. It needs me to get with God's system. It's the only way the world gets blessed. Otherwise, the world is stuck, fending for itself, and getting whatever goodies it gets from the demon boys. And you know they never do a thing for anybody in the human race without a heavy price at the end. That's been the theme of so many stories, of so much literature. Everybody's aware of that. Even if they sort of scoff at the idea of demons, or the gods, or, you know, the spirits, or whatever you want to call them. The world is stuck with trying to do for itself, or trying to get supernatural help from, you know, beings who are only interested in using humans as toys and pawns for their own goals. Do you want the world to be stuck with that? And notice, you're a king in training. You're responsible for everything that goes right and everything that goes wrong. And you don't do anything yourself. You order it. You order it when you ask God. God says a thing and it happens. But he don't say nothing unless you ask him. Ask and I will do it, Christ said. You going to listen to him? Second thing, you're busy learning and living on Bible. That's an executive function. That's a king's function. Learning principles, learning policies, learning how to think. You don't run around doing anything. And because you're learning how to think, God blesses the world with what the world wants. Good weather, competence. Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28, go read them yourself. So, if you aren't learning and living on Bible, if you're not in the system, the world isn't getting blessed due to you. It's getting cursed due to you. Just like from time immemorial, what a king says, right or wrong, influences his whole country and many countries around him. Bad policy or good policy. It's your decision which way you want to go. And hopefully, at this juncture, I've summarized the basics of God deeds versus good deeds. It's two universes. Satan's trying to confuse us in Christianity. He wants to make us look just like every other religion on the planet, busy doing good deeds. So we don't see the higher kingly function of church that was inaugurated by Christ in Matthew 16, 18, prayed for by him in John 17, authored and finished as far as the, the, the structure by him in Hebrews 12, 2. So you ignore that system, which is Ephesians 4, at your peril. Because you will be held responsible if you're not in the system. I am held responsible when I'm not in the system. And that's something we got to live with forever. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be penalized by being farther away from Christ because I didn't stay in his system. I don't want to live forever knowing how screwed up I was by not being in his system. And I'll have my regrets just like everybody else. 
But at least I want to get that crown. Because the more you have in eternity, the more you have to honor Christ. That's the whole purpose of money. It's to honor somebody else with it. That's the joy of it. It's to be able to make somebody else's life happier. Because your life is already happy. you got the money. Okay, what can be better than that? Well, making other people's life happier. Why did God come down to us? To make us happy. Not to get goodies from us. He wants to do all the goodies. Okay, so why not say yes? And if I say no, I'm cursing the world. I don't want that on my conscience. I've screwed up enough in my life, thank you. So, that's my decision. And i got to live with it and remake it every second on the second. Oh, Dad, oh, I screwed up. One job, one nine. Back online, and the world is being blessed. Offline, the world is being cursed. See, it is a ruling position. Even though all I'm doing is totally internal, inside my head, and outwardly I'm just going to the bathroom and writing emails and doing all kinds of menial stuff. But not in heaven's court. So you got the same decision. Which way do you want to go? The world depends on it. Peace out.